In the early morning hours of June 2nd, 1899, two men crept along a desolate stretch of train track outside Wilcox, Wyoming. The flyer is coming down the tracks. They're about ready to cross a wood trestle bridge. And we see a couple guys with a lantern shaking it back and forth to stop the train. Usually it meant a washed out track or damaged track ahead, and the train should stop. Any engineer in his right mind goes, we got to lock up the brakes. The train stops before the trestle. The people on the train are nervous. We don't stop trains in the middle of the desert, but it just happened. The engineers thought that the bridge might have been washed out. Little did he know that these were robbers up on the tracks. They pull apart the passenger cars, separate them from the engine and the car which carries the safe. Unable to force their way in, the bandits packed the door with explosives instead. They had used too much dynamite. Blew the car sky high. It just demolished the car. It was just a bunch of twisted metal. The cash and the coins are thrown all over the windswept plane. Money, currency, coin everywhere. In an instant, the holdup crew had made off with $50,000 in cash, banknotes, and gold in the most spectacular robbery the West had ever seen. In today's money, that's something over a million dollars. That's in one heist. In an era that saw cold-blooded killers like Jesse James and the Younger Brothers terrorize the West, this job had all the markings of a different kind of gang a notorious group of men known as the Wild Bunch. They would visit havoc upon banks, railroads, mining companies, but they are really cut from a different cloth because they don't leave blood, mayhem, and bodies in their wake. Their leader, Butch Cassidy, was a charismatic thief who had elevated bank and train robbery into an art form. The Wilcox robbery is classic Butch Cassidy is what made Butch a rock star. He became a national celebrity. But the freewheeling world of Butch Cassidy and his sidekick, a moody Easterner with a fast gun known as the Sundance Kid, was based on a frontier order that was rapidly fading into myth. The West's being crisscrossed by rail lines. Mines are everywhere, cities are exploding. And this era of open opportunity is drawing to a close at the end of the 19th century. The story of Butch and Sundance plays out as that curtain is coming down. The game is changing. The railroads don't care how much it costs. They don't care what trouble they have to go to. They're going to end the robbing. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid are the last of the Wild Riders of the West. And when they're gone, the Wild West is gone. Though he would one day be known as the most fearsome bad man of the West, Butch Cassidy was born Robert Leroy Parker in 1866 to a family of devout Mormons. His father, Maximilian, who was among the earliest Mormon settlers, could barely eke out a living from the parched earth of their homestead in southern Utah. He was often forced to take work far from home for months at a time. With his father gone, Robert's mother, Anne, a tough and deeply religious woman, looked to her eldest son to help raise their growing family. Bob Parker was the oldest of 13 kids, and so he became the surrogate father, and he would take care of the kids. Bob was like a big kid himself, and he was throughout his whole life. He was a very gregarious man who made friends wherever he went because of his personality. His mother homeschooled the kids, mostly on the Bible. 
She would hold services there. He absolutely adored his mother. His mother was very devout. The family was strict. There was a confirmed right and wrong. There were fundamental Christian values in the family. At the age of 13, Robert took a job on a nearby ranch to help earn money to support his family. It was there that he met a man who would forever alter the direction of his life, a small-time cattle rustler named Mike Cassidy, who taught him the finer points of how to survive as a cowboy. Mike Cassidy, he's a well-known horseman, and he's great with a revolver, an excellent shot and marksman. And Cassidy takes a liking to little Bobby Parker, teaches him how to really ride a horse teaches him how to handle a revolver, how to become a good marksman. And more importantly, Mike Cassidy shows him how to cut corners. There's big cattle operations, and they'll never miss it if one or two or 10 of the herd gets cut away and goes to another place. And Robert Parker watched Mike Cassidy acquire cattle and horses in that fashion. For Robert, Mike Cassidy was a man free from the poverty and religious confines that dominated his life. Cassidy filled his head with visions of a wider world, a world where adventure and greater paydays were within reach. And by the time he was 18, Robert was itching to strike out on his own. If you're Robert Leroy Parker, you look at your dad who played by the rules and lost worked himself to the bone and had nothing to show for it. You look at Mike Cassidy, a man who cuts corners, takes a little here, takes a little there, lives by his wits, and is always getting ahead. And so he rides in the direction, if you will, of Mike Cassidy. He rides away. Will he ever be back? He promises he will, but will he ever be back? 